I've got some great news for you. Cisco DevNet have created a hosted version of Cisco Viral, or as it's called now, Cisco Modeling Labs. You can now access CML for free using the hosted solution hosted by Cisco DevNet. You don't need any software. You don't need iOS images. All you need to do is download a VPN client, so any Connect client from Cisco DevNet, and then you'll be able to access labs using the DevNet sandbox. Hank Preston has created this lab. In a previous video, which I've linked here and below, I showed you how to use Cisco Viral for free using one of the Cisco DevNet sandboxes. But this sandbox is specifically using CML or Viral 2, as it was called. And the fantastic thing about the sandbox is you don't have to use a pre-built topology. Hank has created a pre-built topology with a whole bunch of devices, Nexus devices, ASA, iOS V layer two, iOS V, et cetera, but you don't have to use that topology. You can create your own lab for free now using the Cisco DevNet sandbox. I think this is fantastic news because a lot of people can't afford $200 a year for Cisco Viral. So rather than paying for Viral and running it locally on your computer, you can use CML in the cloud hosted by Cisco DevNet for free. Now there are some limitations. You have to firstly book this lab to be able to use it. So depending on how busy it is, you may not get a spot. And there's a maximum of four hours currently. So you can only use the lab for up to four hours. But I think it's fantastic that Cisco DevNet are providing this. So big shout out to Hank Preston, to Susie Wee and the DevNet team for making this available for everyone. Hank has told me that he's going to be creating new labs or additional labs. So this is the first lab using CML or Viral 2. New labs will be created. So depending on when you're watching this, you'll be able to access this one lab or additional labs hosted on Cisco DevNet. So more good news is I've been speaking with Hank Preston and he's gonna once again be creating videos with me about DevNet topics. So if you've got any questions or topics that you want him to cover, then please put it in the comments below. Now this is only one of multiple surprises. I'm gonna be announcing a lot more stuff in the next few days and next few weeks. So if you wanna win a free course as an example, you have to be quick for some of my giveaways. So make sure that you've subscribed to my YouTube channel Make sure that you click on the bell to get notifications. And if you enjoyed this video, please like it. That really helps me with the YouTube robots. Now at the time of this recording, CML Personal Edition hasn't been released. It's gonna be released on the 12th of May. So if you wanna get hands-on using CML in preparation for the release date, now's your chance. CML Enterprise is available, but CML Personal Edition isn't. The main difference between Enterprise and Personal is the expansion up to 300 nodes, as well as tech support. The software is the same. I've spoken to the viral developers and they've told me that it's exactly the same software used in enterprise as well as personal edition. Personal edition is however limited to 20 nodes, so 20 Cisco nodes. You can run Linux nodes in addition to that. So, so the built-in Linux nodes, as an example, can be added to your topology to get you over that 20 node limit. So as an example, you could have 20 Cisco routers and switches as well as 10 Linux hosts running in your topology. You also don't get support from Cisco, it's community support. So people like me are sharing and contributing to the community to help everyone use CML Personal Edition. Now in this example, I'm gonna be using a Windows laptop. Process is very similar on Windows or on a Mac as an example. You need to download the Cisco AnyConnect client, which basically sets up a VPN to Cisco DevNet so that you can access the labs. You have to install that software. Okay, so enough said, let's get started. And I'm gonna show you now, step-by-step, step, how to access the DevNet labs, how to connect to them and build your own topologies. Now to make it easy to reserve a lab, I've created a bit.ly link. So if you use bit.ly forward slash free CML, that'll take you to this specific sandbox. Now you need to log in. So in my example, I'm gonna log in with a Cisco ID, but you could log in with Facebook or with Google or with GitHub. 
or Webex, but I'm gonna click on login with a Cisco ID. This is once again free, so if you don't have a Cisco ID, you don't wanna use social media accounts, then just create an account. You'll be prompted for your username and password. And once you've logged in, you'll be able to see the lab. So I can see it says Cisco Modeling Lab. There's a dev box, there's VLAN one, which is a connection to the switch. There's some information here on the left-hand side, but the most important thing is you probably wanna reserve a lab. So click on reserve on the top right. Specify how long you want the lab. They only allow you to reserve up to four hours. So you can't specify days or weeks or minutes. Maximum is four hours. And then specify when you want the lab. You can specify date and time. I'm gonna specify that I want it right now. So I'm gonna leave this as start now. Duration is four hours. Click reserve to reserve the lab. Now it does take time for this lab to be set up. So what you'll notice is they have a countdown telling you when the lab will be available. It takes at least 10 minutes for the lab to be available. So if you wanna access the lab immediately, reserve it, go and get a coffee and then come back. But it's probably better or wiser to reserve ahead of time. So try and reserve a lab for when you want it, like tomorrow or next week so that you know it's available. This is a shared resource, so it might not be available when you wanna use it. That'll depend on how busy the labs get, how many people are trying to reserve these labs. Now, a few minutes before the lab becomes available, you'll get an email from Cisco DevNet stating that they're setting up the lab. So it takes about 10 minutes to set up, one of the things you need to do is download the Cisco AnyConnect VPN client. So if you haven't got that installed, then download that and install it. And I'll show you in a moment how to do that. And then when the lab is available, you'll get one more email with your login credentials. So again, you're told if you don't have AnyConnect installed on your system, you need to download that. They've also got an installation guide to help you install the software if you're not sure how to do that. If you do have it already installed on your system, then you can connect to your lab. So we given the lab address as well as a username and password to log in. So the first thing you need to do is download the AnyConnect client. So go to developer cisco.com site sandbox AnyConnect or use the link that they provided. Download the software for your operating system. In this example, I'm using Windows. So I'm gonna download the Windows software. It's about 32 meg in size. If you're using a Mac, then download the AnyConnect client for Mac. Okay, the software has downloaded. So I'm going to double click on the zip file and then double click setup.exe. Windows is complaining that this isn't a Microsoft verified app. I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna click install. I'm gonna click yes to allow the app to make changes to my device. I'll close some of these windows and notice here we get given a whole bunch of options. I'd recommend that you don't go with all of these options. So I'm gonna select all to uncheck all of these options. And the only thing I'm going to install is the core and VPN. I'm not gonna do all the other options, like starting before login, stuff like that. I don't need that. I just wanna use this for this lab. So I'm gonna manually start it up. So I'm gonna click install selected and then click okay to install the software. I need to agree to the license agreement. Software is now installed. Okay, so the software has installed, I'll click OK. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is start up the AnyConnect client. And what I'll do is copy my lab address that I was given via email. And I'll paste that in and click Connect. That'll connect to Cisco DevNet. I need to put in my username, put in the password that I've been allocated and click OK. And if my reservation is currently active, this will connect to the VPN. And as you can see there, I've now connected to Cisco DevNet. Okay, so back on Cisco DevNet's website, I'm told that I can connect to the server using this IP address, 10.10.20.161. Username is developer, 
password is Cisco12345. So I'll open up a browser and I'll browse to 10, 10, 20, 161. I'm told that the connection is not private. That's good. Cisco CML is using a self-signed certificate. So I wanna to proceed to that server. Now my connection here is very slow. I'm currently in South Africa in lockdown. That's why my hair is so long. So the connection may not be that great. Hopefully it'll be better for you. This is one of the problems using a hosted solution. You need a decent connection. Mine isn't that great. So I'm gonna log in with the username developer. Password is C1SCO12345 per the DevNet documentation. Okay, so I'm having a problem at the moment. My connection is broken. So based on my experience, what I've found is that if you have this issue, if you've just installed the VPN client and you have this issue where you can't get access to the internet, notice I can't ping any sites. So google.com, cisco.com doesn't resolve. What I'm gonna do is disconnect the connection and I'm going to quit the software and then I'm gonna run it again. So I'm gonna run the VPN client for a second time. So I'm currently disconnected from the VPN and notice I can ping google.com. So I'm gonna make that a continuous ping. So hopefully when I connect, the ping will continue. So I'll click connect. It's remembered my username. I'll add my password and click okay. The ping to Google should continue succeeding while this is established. So I've now connected and I've got connectivity to Google. So that looks a lot better. So what I'll do is refresh my login page to Cisco Viral. Pings are still working to Google and I've got a connection to the Viral server. So that's something I've experienced Windows 10 with the AnyConnect client. So I'm gonna say developer, password is C1SCO12345. And hopefully I'll be able to log in now. Pings are still working. And there you go. I've been able to log into Cisco Viral. There is a default topology once again. Hank has created this default topology. So I could, as an example, access the console of the ASA. Now in this case, I've made the mistake of using Brave as my browser. Recommend that you don't use Brave, but use Chrome or another browser to access the lab. So I'll start up Chrome. You can get it to work on Brave, but it's a lot of work. So let's just switch to using Chrome so that we don't have this server disconnect issue and other issues accessing the topology. So again, I'll bypass the warning about the certificate. I'm using Chrome in this example. Username is developer C1SC012345. Click login. And there you go. I'm back in using Chrome. I'll click on this topology again. Click on the ASA. Click on console. Click open console and there you go. I've now connected to the ASA in this topology. Now I'm not gonna explain all the options in Cisco Viral. I've got a whole bunch of other videos that you can watch starting at this video in the playlist. So have a look at this video. If you wanna learn how to install Cisco Viral, I've got a whole bunch of other videos on YouTube that you can watch if you wanna set up Cisco Viral. But what I'd like to show you here is I could, as an example, stop this lab and then add my own lab. So I'm gonna create my own lab here. I could rename that lab as let's say test one. And then what I'll do is just drag a router and a switch and a router to the topology. I'll zoom in here. Now, if you watch any of my other videos, you'll notice the interface is exactly the same. 
this is Cisco Viral as if it's running locally. It's just running in this example on the cloud. So I'll connect the first interface to the first interface on the switch, connect the switch to the router, second interface. I'll click simulate start lab to start the lab up. You can see the devices are booting. I'll click on the layer two switch, click on console, open console, and hopefully we'll see that booting up. And there you go, it's busy booting. While that's booting up, if I go back to lab manager, notice this topology has now been turned off and I'm running my own topology. You can run your own topology using this free viral server running within Cisco DevNet, totally free. There's no cost for using this. The disadvantage here is it's a shared resource. You may not be able to use the lab when you want to because it's busy, because lots of other people want to use this lab. You can also only reserve one session at a time. So fantastic. If you haven't got Cisco Viral locally, personally, I've purchased Cisco Viral because I want to run it locally on my local laptop. It also gives me the ability to use it whenever I want to. I'm not reliant on this lab, but I think this is a fantastic resource that you can use. You can access Cisco Viral for free when it's available. There's absolutely no cost to use this. This is sponsored by Cisco DevNet. They have a whole bunch of labs that you can access. Free labs to learn and study. Now, depending on when you're watching this, Hank is building an SD-WAN lab. So you could study for your CCMP or other certifications using the SD-WAN lab. They've got DNA center labs. A whole bunch of labs are available directly from developer.cisco.com. Okay, so just to show you this, let's complete this lab. I'm gonna bypass the initial configuration of the router, do the same on the other router, bypass the initial configuration, go back to the first router. You can see that interfaces are coming up. Got a whole bunch of log messages, but I've pressed enter a whole bunch of times. Notice I've got access to the console. I can type enable to go to privilege mode, conf t, give the router a name. Let's configure the ethernet interface with an IP address, 10.1.1.1 slash 24 mask. I'll ping 10.1.1.2, that won't work because I have to configure this router first. So on router two, enable host router two, interface gigabit zero slash zero, no shut it, IP address 10.1.1.2 slash 24 mask, back on router one. I probably forgot to no shut the interface, which I did forget to do. So go back on the interface, no shut it. And hopefully the ping will now succeed. So I'll press up key. There's my ping. Can we ping 10.1.1.2? Yes, we can. So router one can ping router two. So again, that's how you access a free viral server hosted by Cisco DevNet. There's no cost to use this. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Please like this video and please click on the bell to get notifications. I'm David Bombal. I wanna wish you all the very best.